Welcome back to the second installment of Drawing from a Grid. I have my basic contour drawing figured out, so everything is kind of in the place where I need it to be. So now's the time to start working with values. Basically, when I start shading, I start light and then slowly get darker as I go along. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter where you start. Uh, if you find that, like me, you tend to smudge along the side of your hand when you're working, um, in that case you can just take a sheet of paper, even your reference photo, and place it underneath your hand, and then you can keep shading, and that way your hand isn't going to be rubbing across your paper and smudging your drawing. So it's going to protect things. So I'm just going to go through this and speed it up because it is going to take me at least an hour or so, maybe more, to shade things. Um, I will eventually use a blending stump. So this is a blending stump. It's essentially just like a rolled up sheet of paper. So it's rolled really tightly and then kind of shaved down. Um, it's not a pencil. We just use it to smush the graphite around on the page. So that's why it's dark. It already has graphite on it. So um, let's get started. We'll speed things up a bit. When I get started shading, I usually work lightly um, and just start to fill in kind of my mid-range values before I get really dark. Depending on how I'm feeling, I might be holding my pencil sideways in sort of a more sketchy manner, or I might be just holding it regularly. Um, eventually, like, your pencil is just going to kind of dull down, and I feel like that's the ideal sort of level of sharpness when you're shading is slightly dull, so you can get kind of a broader mark with it. When I shade, I also kind of move around a lot, so you'll see me doing that throughout this drawing pretty frequently. Something you might notice me doing right now is cleaning up the edges. So um, if you notice on the picture, the side of his face here is actually defined by a highlight. It's not a line, it's like where the highlight of his face meets the shadow in the background. So what I'm doing is I'm actually like working on just defining that shadow and then kind of erasing out the highlight to make sure that I have a clean edge going on there. Um, so doing things like that, kind of working on your edges where light meets shadow is going to help define your figure a lot better and make it look more realistic. One thing that's really helpful when you are working from a grid is you can use each individual square to compare values in addition to proportions and ratios and shapes. Um, so I can kind of look at each square and say, okay, where is the area that's closest to white? Where's the area that's closest to black? And just kind of help me figure out my values. So what's light, what's dark? and use that to just kind of help me get more accurate representations of the shadows and planes of the face. You can see that I'm slowly building up the values as I go through. So I start kind of light and then slowly start making them darker. Um, generally, I do that so that I can make changes more easily but also it is kind of a process to build up layers of graphite and make it as dark as you need it to be.
So I decided to work on this at an art night with some friends, and yeah, two and a half hours later. It's taking me a bit longer than I was expecting. But now, at this point, I'm starting to really build up the values in the hair and the background to push the face forward. And at this point I have used my blending stump to kind of smooth the values in the face. And so that's what I'm using right here. And the blending stump just kind of pushes the graphite into the paper and removes most of the marks that are created, so it makes it a lot more smooth. The only problem with that is that it also picks up a lot of the graphite, so it makes it lighter than when you laid it down. So generally what happens is you have to go over it a second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time sometimes, um, to put the darker values back in. Um, I'm also using my kneaded eraser to kind of pull out highlights in the hair and in the jacket. And it's a really great tool for kind of shaping and lifting out areas that I need to be lighter because I can form the eraser into any shape that I want. So it's, it's not necessarily the best if you have to erase heavy graphite, but um, for small areas it works really well because you can kind of mold it into a point. And then I'm going back in here and just darkening up my shadows and getting more individual details of the hair as I go along. So the big thing with drawing like this is it's really a back and forth process. Pencil, blending stump, eraser, pencil, blending stump, eraser, back and forth, back and forth. Um, yeah, this it does get pretty tedious when you get very detail-oriented. Especially with fabric. Especially tweed. Tweed! I guess it's not plaid. Plaid's the worst. But, yeah, the sort of like cross-hatching of the tweed gets pretty ridiculous after a while. A lot of back and forth here and kind of just building up textures. So yes, I can also use my kneaded eraser to kind of lift out big areas of highlights by just smooshing it down and twisting it. And I feel like with all of these one hour later, two hour later, so just think of Futurama, the one with Beck in it, where they're doing the concert, and you're like, oh, I didn't mean this song to last three hours, but we kind of got into a thing. It's my favorite episode. So every time something takes longer than I expected, we kind of got into a thing. <laughs> and here we have it. Eddie Redmayne. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and stick around for more tutorials.